Yo, what's going on guys? In today's video I want to talk about the Endless Heist, which is going to be part of my Leafstar strategy for 3.20 link, which is going to be farming Endless Heist into Simulacrum. And the reason why I decided to make this video separately is just in case you want to farm Endless Heist and you're not interested in the Simulacrum fart, you can still follow this guide. So this video is going to be basically two parts. So first part is going to be overall guide about uh, endless size. And then at the end, I also want to talk about the build that I made specifically for this uh, strategy. Uh, but before I uh, start the gui guide, I also want to quickly mention that most of the time people do this strategy very similarly, but there are a few differences uh, that people uh, apply to it. and most uh, important differences are obviously, first of all, the build, which in case this is going to be Toxic Rain. And then the second difference is for how long people do this strategy. So if you would ask me for how long I am going to do it, it is going to be probably between 10 and 20 hours. So uh, if you are planning to do the strategy for longer than that, than that uh, you might want to uh, look for a different strategy because uh, these strategies are also going to do blueprints and I'm just going to strictly focus on contracts. Okay, so uh, how do you start farming and size? So first of all, you want to reach at least level 59. Uh, why uh, level 59? Well, because at level 59, you're going to use a rogue marker and you're going to transport uh, yourself to the rogue harbor and here from the Wakano, you're going to be able to buy uh, contracts and these contracts are always one level higher than you. So if you're going to be level 59, uh, you're going to buy contracts level 60 and it is up to level 67. So if you're going to be level 67, it is still going to be 67 and it's going to stay like that from that point on. So when you're going to be level uh, 59, you're going to buy uh, contracts from him. And the reason why you want them to be level 60 is because of chaos recipe. So if you don't know what Chaos Recipe is, it's basically you can sell a full set of uh, unidentified items, which have to be at least level 60, and you're going to sell them for two Chaos Orbs. If any of them is going to be unidentified, it's going to be just one Chaos. So you always want to sell them unidentified. So this is going to be a big part of your profit from farming and less heist. So uh, that's the first part. You want to be level 60. Uh, I mean 59, so you can start uh, doing chaos recipe uh, in uh, these contracts. And the contracts that you're going to buy are going to be demolition and lock picking. So uh, you would probably ask why these two? Well, uh, because demolition, you can see in this cheat sheet, which I'm going to link in the description, uh, demolition is the only one that has the uh, generic reward. Generic are actually the best because they are going to uh, give you uh, currency, uh, jewelry, basically everything you're going to drop from them. And generally, you're going to drop more from this chest than from the other ones. And the second most important one is lock picking, because you are actually going to need some chance orbs. And lock picking is generally the best to farm uh, just straight up currency. Uh, you can also do some counter and some perceptions, uh, maybe some uh, deception also. Uh, but I try to focus uh, fully on demolition and lock picking. Again, demolition for overall loot and lock picking for the uh, just chance orbs. Why do you need chance orbs? Well, uh, because these contracts you buy for chance orbs. And if they are at least magic, you're going to buy them for alchemy. But most of them you're going to buy for the chance orbs. So, especially early on, so like at level 59, you want to focus on buying. Uh, if you have only like one or two chance orbs, uh, you should buy a lock picking. Later on, you're gonna uh, focus on uh, demolition. But you are actually at this point uh, not gonna even start farming uh, the uh, contracts, you're just gonna buy them. So at level 59, you're gonna go in here, uh, go through them, buy the demolition and lock picking. Then you're gonna continue through the campaign, level up once. And then once you level up, the vendor is going to refresh. So you're going to buy more of them. And basically every one level, you're going to go back in here and buy additional contracts. Unless you run out of uh, chance orbs, then I guess you can already start farming the ones that you did buy. So you can uh, buy more. 
so the next step would be just to finish the Merkla, so you basically can get as much power as possible for your character, but you actually don't want to kill Kitava, because then you're gonna lose some resistances and you don't really gain anything from killing uh, her. I guess you get uh, two passive points, but they don't really matter that much. So yeah, uh, just buy contracts when you start uh, at level 59, and then once you finish the Merc Club, then you just go in here and start farming. So the next uh, thing is that uh, the reason why this is called, called the Endless Size is that because, uh, again, every time you're going to level up, you're going to refresh the shops, you're going to be able to buy them. But also, every time you de-level your character, you also can buy these contracts. So just to show you how to do it, you have to sell one Wisdom Scroll and one Orb of Scouring to the vendor. And you need to have one uh, unspent uh, point. And you're going to get this Farewell. book and you can use it and you lose one level. And as you can see in here, the Need a trim. Need a job. shop got resetted. So now you can buy more things like demolition. Uh, let's look for more another demolition. So this time I got only two. So now I would have to level up again so I can buy more contract and then de-level again. And generally you're going to need between two, three and four uh, contracts to level up. Maybe sometimes two wow. if you actually kill a lot of monsters. So in here I probably would also buy uh, probably counter so I can have three and I would try to get 33% experience in every single one of these uh, contracts. See you. Okay, so now let me show Hello. you how to how I am doing them. So here you focus fully on tips you when you are doing demolition, and when you are doing lock picking, you focus on uh, cars. So let me do one example. And when you are opening these contracts, you are also losing some rogue markers. But when you're gonna reach the end of the contract. So here you're going to get the thing that you're going to sell to the vendor and this is going to give you more uh, uh, markers. So on your way you're going to just open all of the small chests. Uh, so here you can pick up the uh, like weapons, chests and, and so on for your chaos recipe, but you don't want to spend too much time picking up these things. You mostly want to focus on uh, jewelry because this is the thing that you're going to need the most for the chaos recipe. So here we can see the first uh, mysterious chest, but I'm actually not gonna uh, open it right now. I'm just gonna open the doors. Here we can see one Chaos Orb, one Chrome. Uh, here even more currency. And here I got some jewelry for Chaos Recipe. I'm gonna also open these doors. You're gonna see in a second why uh, I'm not opening the chest yet. Now I'm gonna go towards the end. And this also open these doors. But we'll get there. And now I'm gonna take your weapon wow. again. You're gonna sell it to the vendor for more markers. Now the alarm is gonna be triggered, but we are doing these contracts with Tibbs, and Tibbs have a special ability where he can open two chests after the uh, after the alert is being triggered after the alarm is being triggered, so you can still open these two big chests. And big chests give the most amount of alerts, this is why you want, want to open them last. So here you can see I did drop four Chaos Orbs from these contracts, and some additional other currency, and one amulet, one ring for Chaos Recipe. And now you just want to run towards the entrance. If you would be doing any other uh, contract, so without tips, you would open the chests first, so that... Uh, you can still open them before the alert, but that's uh, the good thing about tips that you can do it later. But actually, early on, you can only open one chest. If you want to open two chests with him, uh, I believe you need to reach level 5. And if you want to reach level 5 with him, you actually have to do some uh, brute force contracts, because he actually can't level up in demolition up to level uh, 5. Uh, you can see in here, he can only get level 4. So... Uh, only in the brute force he needs to, uh, he can get level 5. So if you want to get this level, you actually have to do some additional brute force contract, but it doesn't take too much time to level him up. And in terms of the gear, you just want to get additional uh, reduce uh, raising of level, maybe some reduce uh, cost. So here you can see uh, 
the ring cut is reduced by 6%, chance for opening interest to not generate other levels, also decent. I wouldn't focus too much on getting crazy gear, because again, I'm doing this just for like 10-20 hours, so I'm not gonna spend a ton of currency on upgrading this gear, so I'm just gonna get whatever I can, probably just I'm gonna focus on some additional reduced uh, raising of level. So that's basically uh, the whole strategy. Now I will just run the other two. You can uh, sell the we shall dispel. Time for us uh, to take action. the item that you just got in here, <laughs> How Good and you put stuff to be uh, stashed. And it's very important to do this as efficiently as possible. So as you could see, uh, she was opening the portal, and within the time that she was opening the portal, I was able to sell some stuff. You can even put some stuff if in your uh, stash. Uh, but here you can see I only did get 20% uh, experience. That's probably because I wasn't too focused on killing monsters because I was talking. But yeah, generally you want to try to get at least 30% uh, experience so you can, uh, so you don't have to run as many contracts as possible after you level up. Again, you just go in here, you buy additional contracts, and then you de-level and you buy even more. So now I want to quickly mention some additional uh, tips and uh, possible questions that you're gonna uh, have i want to answer them because i already know what people are gonna ask me so uh first the most common question is uh, what level i am stopping at so for me personally i uh, don't really care too much about the level i want it to be at least level 62 because at that point you're gonna unlock a lot of unique items that can drop uh, from the uh, heist but after that, I just go uh, as high as possible, probably level 66, 67. As long as you can level up within like three contracts, it is fine. And keeping the higher level uh, is sort of better for leveling your gem. So if you're going to be leveling something like Toxic Rain, you can level it, it up uh, to more levels. But this is additional uh, tip. Uh, always check your levels, because let's say you are only level uh, 62. And you have toxic rain level six which requires level 62 and uh, then you're gonna level up uh, you're gonna level up your toxic rain but then you're gonna have to de-level yourself so you can buy more contracts and now you suddenly can't use your toxic rain anymore so be careful with leveling gems always make sure that after de-leveling you're still gonna be able to use all of your uh, gems second thing is about uh, the amount of row markers do you have so uh, like I said, when you're opening, you're opening the contract. Here you can see how much it is gonna cost. So around 300 uh, markers, and you generally get around 500, maybe 600 from completing the contract. So you don't need as many uh, markers as you're gonna get. So you can actually start selling them. Some people use them later on blueprints, but like I said, I am not gonna do any uh, blueprints with this strategy. So what you also can do is, for example, if you get a very long contract, this one is actually pretty small and it has a lot of uh, rewards throughout the entire contract, but let's say this would be like up to here, you could just uh, run in, open like all of these chests and don't even run towards the end, just run back. So you can save yourself time. Again, you don't need as many contracts, so you can just run in, run back. Not only you're gonna self your save yourself time running over there, but also, you're not gonna have to open any doors on your way uh, back. So that would be another tip. And also when your alert level is, let's say toward the end, you can also maybe like open one or two additional chests. And, and if you have enough time, you can still run in here be before uh, lockdown. Of course, you can still open this door and get the reward, or you can use this time to run back so you don't have to uh, go for the extra doors. But you have to remember, if you do it this way, you're going to level up a bit less so you, uh, because you're not going to kill as many monsters. So you have to make sure that you have enough contracts. But that's also another reason why I prefer to stay at higher level. So that in case I actually run out of contracts, let's say I go to the uh, vendor and there is like no no demolition, no lock picking uh, contracts. What I can do is I can just I'll spec one additional point, maybe like something like this, and I can de-level again. And I check the vendor, and let's say again he doesn't have that many uh, good contracts, then I can de-level again. So I can do it multiple times until level 62. If you are just at level 63, 62, uh, then you have to risk it. You always have just one, maybe two chances to get the uh, 
good amount of contracts. Uh, this case, I guess uh, I have some additional levels to do that. So that's basically it in terms of heist. Uh, if you have additional questions, obviously you can ask them in the comments. So now I am going to talk about the build. So you probably noticed that it is the uh, Toxic Rain, and Toxic Rain is actually not that great for farming blueprints, especially on a budget. You can invest into it a little bit so you can get more life, more defenses, more damage, so you can do blueprints. Uh, and blueprints, you're most of the time going to do higher level, but I don't really care about that. Uh, so uh, that's why I'm not really doing blueprints because Toxic Rain is not like super great at them. Uh, so in terms of a build, let me show you my POB. Here is the tree. So on tree you want to focus as much as possible on getting additional movement speed. This is why I'm going in here for additional movement speed and cooldown recovery for my uh, phase run. Here additional movement speed if you haven't taken damage recently. I'm playing Raider because you get a perma onslaught for additional movement speed and also you get phasing. I actually uh, prefer the phasing over the onslaught. If a uh, raider didn't have onslaught, I think I still would go for it because you can get onslaught technically with the uh, pathfinder from the onslaught flask, uh, so silver flask, uh, especially after the changes. Now the onslaught is gonna be affected by the buff effect, uh, which means flask effect is gonna affect it. So pathfinder is still fine if you want to go for it, but I really like just having perma. Uh, phasing even without uh, quartz flask which would also give you phasing it's just so nice in case you have to run through any monsters uh, in heist uh, phasing is just always nice and also i guess it's just a nice addition so again here movement speed here you get additional uh 12 percent movement speed here you get uh, even more i think six percent and uh, also in here additional five percent so just focus on movement speed also, this is why your uh, the biggest upgrade you want to go for is Queen of the Forest. Queen of the Forest is going to give you a ton of movement speed, so 75%, uh, but it also gives you 25% reduced. So overall, it gives you 50% movement speed if you have 45,000 evasion. This is why you want to focus on as much evasion as possible. So I have here 54k uh, with my uh, Jade Flask up, but even without Jade Flask, still 39% which is still pretty good amount of movement speed and to get this amount of uh, evasion you also should be using the grace so in terms of other items uh, quill drain is just pretty good uh, it gives you a lot of damage it has a lot of attack speed that it actually but it actually also reduces your damage and this is why i am not using caustic arrow in this version of the build uh, because caustic arrow doesn't really benefit that much from having attack speed and it would deal 30% less damage. This is why I am using, in my skill setup, I am using two Toxic Rains. So first setup is just me shooting myself uh, in a four link, and second one is Ballista setup. But I'm gonna go over these skills in a second. Let me finish the skill, uh, the items first. So uh, again, go for a Quill Rain for Quiver, just damage with a multi, attack speed, life, and damage with bows. Obviously, you wouldn't have this exact bow at the beginning. It would be a, a pretty hard to craft it like that. But these are basically the stats that you want. Uh, in I would say probably attack speed would be the highest priority. Obviously, life, because you want to survive. And damage over time multi is probably going to be hard to get, so you can also try to get some damage with uh, bow skills. Default of Devotion is also pretty nice, 20% uh, movement speed. If it's going to be expensive, I wouldn't focus on it uh, uh, too much at the beginning. Probably would be my last upgrade. Uh, for the gloves, just life resist. Same thing for amulet, uh, rings. You just want to go for, go for life resist. Eventually, if you can, try to get the uh, minus mana cost uh, rings. Uh, but you shouldn't uh, really focus too much about mana because uh, you're going to use a 4 link, maybe 5 link eventually. So your mana uh, cost is not gonna be that high. And for the belt, also just some life and resist. And if you can, try to get some flask effect. For flasks, uh, you want to get uh, a life flask with bleed immunity. I would uh, focus on getting the bleed immunity over getting the instant, but preferably you would have the instant and bleed immunity on one flask. Mana flask, you just want the enduring for uh, 
uh, basically uh, infinite uh, mana uh, fast duration. Well, not infinite. It's just it's not gonna be removed when uh, it reaches full. Uh, Jade Flask again for the evasion, so you can reach your 45k. Granite Flask. It's not super needed. If you can try to get it for additional armor, so in case you get hit, uh, you still have your hit reduced by a little bit, and a quick silver, obviously, for additional movement speed. So that's basically uh, your gear. It is not super expensive, it's also not super cheap. Queen Quick Nova Force is probably gonna be the most expensive. I expect it's gonna be between 50 and 100 chaos, and everything else should be like one to five chaos. Uh, maybe Devoted Devotion is gonna be also decently expensive. Now let's go over the skills. So like I said, Toxic Rain, uh, I would go for Toxic Rain, Vicious Projectile, Miyash, Archer and Efficacy. And like I said, you shouldn't really focus on getting the 6 link. Your damage is going to be good enough to kill most of the stuff, but eventually if you get a 5 link, go for Void Manipulation and then Faster Attack. Uh, you could actually get, go for something else, but Faster Attack is pretty nice because it synergizes well with Focus Ballista uh, on your uh, second Toxic Rain setup with Ballista Totem and Withering Touch. This way, if you're going to attack faster, your Ballista is also going to attack faster, so you're going to get faster uh, Wither stacks. Uh, after that, Phase Run. You can use Phase Run on your left click with increased duration. So you're going to see here, I have here on the left click, so whenever you're going to move, it is going to be automatically uh, be used. And the reason why you use it is because it gives you 37% increased movement speed, obviously depending on the level. Then Grace for my Aura, uh, Cast and Damage Taken Molten Shell just for some additional uh, defenses. And for your second aura, it is actually up to you. You can either go for malevolence for more damage if you feel like you don't need the armor, but if you feel like you need more survivability, go for determination. So it is up to you which one you want to go for. And I, I am personally just gonna test it. Uh, I'm gonna see which one I feel like you need more, and that's the one I'm gonna go for. But probably it's gonna be the malevolence. Maybe early on determination, and then I'm gonna swap to malevolence. I guess we're gonna see. And then the last skills uh, are just whatever. Flame Dash is okay if you need uh, to dodge something. Smoke Mine is uh, obviously pretty nice because it also gives you some additional uh, movement speed when you use it. Withering Step for some easy uh, Wither stacks if, if you don't want to use your uh, Ballista. And Despair for additional damage if you have like a hard rare monster to kill. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it in terms of the tree. Uh, I have right now 300% uh, movement speed. And also I want to mention if you want to get some upgrades, uh, you can go for ring with despair curse on hit, but it's probably gonna be pretty hard to get early on. You can also get the amulet with uh, plus one to either dexterity or chaos kill gems or some additional damage charm over damage over time multiplier. Also, if you can get the Delirium Essence, you can craft your rings with Essence of Delirium, which is also going to give you 15% increased damage over time, multi. And like I previously mentioned, you can also go for just better Quiver with just more damage. And here you can see all of the possible modifiers that affect Toxic Rain. Uh, also, you can go for better bow, but I think that would be my last upgrade. So. Uh, the upgraded ball, which is gonna be crafted, I am gonna mention in my uh, simulacrum video because uh, that's basically the point when I'm when I'm gonna swap to simulacrum. That's when I'm gonna well, but basically when I'm gonna craft the ball, that's when I'm going for simulacrums. So for this video, that's basically gonna be it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.